Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. How many 11 inch by 22 inch rectangular placemats can fit on a four foot by four foot square table without overlapping? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, now before I show you the answer, let's make sure we understand the question. So we have these rectangular placemats, 11 inch by 22 inch. So uh, if, uh, just in case you don't know what a placemat is, so let's suppose we have our table and we have some circular or some round placemats. These are the things that are put in front of our chair. So when we uh, eat our food, our uh, food doesn't get all over our nice table. That is what a placemat is. And the question is saying, how many of these placemats can fit on a four foot by four foot square table without overlapping? So in other words, on our table, we're not gonna have one uh, placemat over another placemat. Okay, so that is the question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Now I have two possible answers here because uh, obviously one is right and one is wrong. And if you did this problem wrong, uh, one of these answers is probably the most common wrong answer, but uh, someone's gonna get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%. So who is that person? Well, if you answered with 9.5 placemats, you did this incorrectly. The correct answer is eight placemats. But don't feel too bad because 9.5, if you got something around uh, 9.5, that shows me that you were thinking uh, pretty well or pretty good about this problem, but you made a critical error. Of course, I'll explain all of that in uh, the solution. But if you answer with eight placemats, well, you have your A plus 100%. And we'll throw in a few extra stars so you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic uh, math word problems and your friends and family be like, good, that's very good for you. But uh, I'm going back to Netflix. But anyways, if you figure this out, that is outstanding. And if you didn't get this right, or if you answered with a 9.5, okay, or, or a, a number around that, well, let's go ahead and uh, get you looking like this because this is not that difficult of a problem, but we do have to be very careful on how we interpret what's going on. All right, so here is our problem. And of course, we're dealing with a math word problem. So always use the rule of three. Read a problem at least three times before you do anything because obviously there's a lot of di different information you have to absorb. And it's critical that you understand what the question is asking. Okay, so here we need to see how many of these placemats can fit on this four foot by four foot square table without overlapping. And this overlapping part is uh, critical and we're not gonna be, um, you know, chop it up any uh, placemats as well. Like uh, let's say here is our ninth uh, placemat. And then of course we're gonna uh, chop one in half to get a uh, 0.5 of a placemat. So if you got 9.5, that doesn't make sense. So we're gonna keep all of our placemats intact and hopefully uh, most of you, um, you know, interpreted the problem in that manner. But uh, it's easy to go astray here if we're not really thinking about the prom or visualizing the prom. So what you wanna do is model this situation. And this is a perfect scenario to kind of look at the prom uh, visually, okay? Cause that's what we're gonna have, that's what we're gonna have to do in order to figure this thing out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. So here is our placemat and we have a rectangular placemat. It's 11 inches by 22 inches and we have a four foot by four foot square table. So we're trying to figure out how many of these will fit on these, uh, this table without overlapping. So we can put these placemats maybe like this, right? Or we can actually, you know, kind of stack them up this way. So what is the right approach? Well, we're gonna have to think about this because it's just not so obvious. And I'm gonna show you 
uh, at the end of this video, um, what a lot of you probably did, where you end up with the wrong answer. So we're going to have to come up with a strategy. Now, the first thing that, we're, uh, that we uh, should notice is that here we're dealing with inches and here we're dealing with feet. So we're going to have to uh, work in the same units of measure. So we're either going to have to work in all feet or all inches. And uh, of course, we'll uh, talk about that in just one second. But we need to kind of think about how we're going to approach this problem. All right. So uh, now, of course, if we had actual placemats and an actual table, we can just kind of shuffle these things around. But the key to figuring this problem out, okay, which is going to be uh, the way that this problem is easy to solve, let's just say, is to look at the placemat. Okay, look at the placemat. Now, if you didn't do, uh, if you didn't solve the problem in this manner, that's perfectly fine as long as you got the right answer and you understand your approach. But I personally think the easiest way to uh, come up with a solution is to say, okay, I have this 11 inch by 22 inch placemat. Now, if I stack them up, I can either kind of arrange my placemats this way or I can arrange them this way, right? I kind of uh, you know, stack them up uh, in a horizontal manner or a vertical manner. But either way, okay, if I take two placemats and I stack them up this way, this is going to be 11 inches and this is going to be 11 inches, the width, right? Here's the length. But uh, it doesn't make a difference whether I stack them this way or this way. I'm still going to end up, if I take two placemats and put them side by side, I'm still going to end up with a 22 uh, inch by 22 inch square. Okay, so right here, if I have 11 and 11, that's 22 inches. And of course, this dimension is 22 inches. So irrespective, if I stack them up this way or this way or place the plates mats uh, next to one another, I'm really dealing with a 22 inch by 22 inch box. So or square. So now the question, uh, you know, we kind of think of it this way on our table. How many of these 22 uh, inch by 22 inch squares can we fit? Because it doesn't make a difference if, uh, you know, this square, the placemats could be like this or the placemats could be like this. So now, hopefully, a lot of you are saying, oh, I understand, Mr. YouTube Math Man, where you're going with this. And that is fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we want to do. All right, so here is our 22 inch by 22 inch square. This contains two placemats, doesn't make a difference. Uh, they could be like this or they could be like this. So let's figure out how many of these squares will fit inside the table. All right, now at this point, we wanna go ahead and convert our dimensions of our table from feet to inches. And how do we do that? Well, one foot, okay, is equal to 12 inches. So four feet is uh, going to be uh, equal to four times 12, which is of course 48 inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and just rewrite um, the dimensions of our table as 40, uh, 48 inches. And so what we have is the following, okay? And that is gonna be a quick uh, commercial interruption because I need your support, okay? <laughs> we'll get back to the problem in just one second. But first I wanna ask you to subscribe, okay? If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I really do need your support. I've been on YouTube for like 10 plus years, have a couple thousand videos, but I can't do it without uh, people's support, right? And it's a critically important to me that I reach as many people as possible that need help in mathematics or that are just generally interested in math. So if you don't mind hitting that uh, subscribe button and hitting that notification bell, that would be outstanding. But I want to take a little bit of time here, not much, uh, for those of you out there that are not familiar with my new math course. Okay, I have a lot of different math courses. You can find links to my uh, main courses in the description, but I have an awesome new math course and I should have built this years ago, but I finally, um, you know, kind of came up with a custom design course based upon a lot of requests from a lot of people over the years. I'm like, you know what, let me just build this course. It's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Now, the purpose of this course is to kind of uh, uh, review or kind of relearn mathematics. Okay, a lot of you were great in math, but that was maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. And you're like, boy, you know what, I wish I can kind of, uh, you know, relearn this stuff. But some of you maybe, uh, you know, look back in your school days 
and you just weren't satisfied. Maybe you had a, you know, not the best school or the best teachers, and you're just, you know, you know, you think back and like I could have learned math way better than, you know, I actually did. So if you want to rebuild your math skills or really learn math for the first time, check out this course. Uh, in this course, you'll learn a ton of basic math. Uh, a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry. Uh, I even teach you some basic trigonometry and some basic probability and statistics. Uh, a lot of people are taking advantage of this course, so I want to kind of highlight this again, just in case you're not familiar with this. But if you're interested in math and you're like, you know what, I want to do something worthy with my time, this is a self-paced, uh, uh, comprehensive course. And uh, anyways, you'll find a link to it in the description below. But let's get back to this problem now. Okay, so we needed a strategy. So we have our 22 inch by 22 inch square, okay? And of course, this contains two placemats, all right? So we got two placemats in here. So how many of these will fit into our uh, four foot by four foot table? Again, we're gonna have to go from uh, feet two inches, and we already did that. So now we have this problem. Okay, so how many of these 22 inch by 22 inch squares can fit inside of this 48 uh, inch by 48 inch square table? Okay, well, hopefully this is a pretty simple prompt to figure out for most of you. But really what we need to do is just kind of look at this, right? And you're like, all right, well, if we have 22 inches and 22 inches, if we stack these up, we know that we're going to get, uh, you know, we just add these up, 22 inches and 22 inches together, that's 44 inches. Now there's no way we're going to be able to stack another 22 inches is going to go off the table, okay? So, but we have room off to the side here. If we have 22 inches here and 22 inches here, that's 44 uh, inches, but we also have 22 inches here and 22 inches here. So that is also 44 inches. So it's uh, hopefully pretty clear that we can stack one, two, three, four of these nice 22 inch by 22 inch squares on this 48 inch by 48 inch squ uh, square table without overlapping okay now each one of these squares contains two placemats so to figure out the answers well we have four squares right for the 22 inch squares uh, so we just have to multiply this by two of course we have two placemats per square so we end up with eight placemats now some of you might be saying oh okay i get that but what about this part right here we didn't use all the area of the table well this is uh pretty much the kind of uh, mistake that a lot of you made uh, by coming up with the answer 9.5. So what am I talking about? Well, let's go ahead and look at this problem from a different perspective. Let's suppose you said, you know what, uh, let's, uh, you know, you're thinking in terms of surface area, which is pretty good, right? You're like, you might be saying, well, let me get the surface area of the placemat and get the surface area of the table and divide the surface area of the table by the surface area of the placemat and that will tell me how many placemats uh, will go into the table, right? So if you took that approach, you would have uh, figured out that the surface area of the table is going to be 48 times 48. This is how we find the area. So that would be 2304 inches squared. And the surface area of our placemat would be 242 inches squared, 11 times 22. So you'd be like, okay, I'm going to take this and divide by that. So we would get uh, come up with uh, 2304 divided by 242, and we end up with approximately 9.52. Now, even if you were like, uh, let me see here, 9.52, we can't have um, a half a placemat, so you put 9. Well, that's even you know better than 9.5, but that's still not correct, okay? Because right here, we can see that uh, we could only fit 8 placemats. Now, if we took this uh, surface area right in here, okay, and we kind of reconfigured this, uh, took all this area, and then, yes, indeed, we could fit another, we have eight placemats, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now all this area right here, we could get uh, another placemat, so our ninth placemat, and actually another half a placement, but that's not what the question is asking. We want to be able to put these rectangular placemats on the table, without overlapping. So you gotta be very careful with these type of questions. But if you were uh, thinking in terms of surface area, that is still, you know, I think pretty good. It's pretty good thinking. But again, you have to be very careful. That's why I always tell you to read the prom multiple times, think about it, because if you were just quick about this prom, like, okay, this is a surface area prom, one, two, three, you will get it wrong. 
Okay, so hopefully this video was entertaining or helpful or just generally, you know, interesting. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.